Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Pastor Daryl E. Paris Sr., First Pentecostal Church in Cape Girada, Missouri. Here we are live this afternoon, uh, coming on just a couple minutes early. Uh, boy, you want everybody to know that we love you and we appreciate you. God is good. God is faithful. Uh, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His promises are true and amen. I don't know about you today, but I am so thankful that I have a God that is watching over you and I. I have a God that is with me every step of the way. I have a God that is there to fight my battles. Whatever I'm facing today, God will take care of it for me. Whatever I am facing tomorrow, God is with me. Whatever I face next week, God is with me. Whatever I face in the future, God is with me. He is my source of strength, and I can depend upon the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And I am so thankful today that in this time of my life, and that I have the Lord that I can depend on. Where do I go? I go to him in my time of need. The Bible says he is our very present help in the time of need, and I thank God for that this evening. God is so wonderful, and we thank him for it today. God is so wonderful, and we thank him for it today. God is, again, the same yesterday, today, and forever, and we can depend upon the Lord. I would like to give a great shout out tonight. I woke up this morning uh, about four o'clock and I was getting prepared to get up and start my day. And I was just thinking, it's just like the Lord dropped in my heart and my spirit, how thankful and how blessed that I really am. I don't deserve it. I don't do anything to merit it, but it's God's faith and God's loving favor and his mercy and he's gentle and he's long suffering and he's understanding but I am so thankful today for the blessings of the Lord upon my life I'm so thankful that Jesus loves me and he loves you and he knows what you have need of but I am thankful for some things to, uh, tonight that I would just like to say uh, I, I want to give out a great shout out to. I want to give a great shout out to our ministerial staff at First Pentecostal Church here in the beautiful city of Cape Dorada. Since March and this COVID and all these things that have come uh, in our uh, lives and the lives of our church and the lives of our families, I want to give a great shout out to our ministerial team. I want to say especially to Brother Craig and uh, Brother and Sister Craig Mitchell, Brother and Sister Robert Bentley, Brother and Sister Lyle Jones, Brother and Sister Steve Butler. How thankful that Sister Fair and I are that you are on the ministerial team at First Pentecostal Church of, of Cape. Those that are listening today, many of you know them, and maybe some of you do not know these wonderful uh, couples that I have just mentioned. And then we have all kinds of other department heads, but just tonight, uh, specifically, I want to say how thankful I am again for Brother Brother and Sister Mitchell, uh, uh, Brother and Sister Bentley, Brother and Sister uh, Lyle Jones, Brother and Sister Steve Butler. Thank you for your preaching. Thank you for your teaching. Thank you for your leading of singing. Thank you for all these things that you have done in very uncertain times. And we've had to modify so many things. And, and I just want to say that you have been a source of strength beyond measure. And God's blessings will uh, bless you uh, abundantly. But we want to say thank you. Also tonight, I'm thankful for my wife. I'm thankful for my family. I'm, I'm thankful for all the First Pentecostal Church family of Cape Girada, Missouri. Each one of you are special, very, very special. We want you to know that we love you so greatly. And we are always so moved by your worship and moved by your compassion and moved by your love. When you enter into those uh, uh, gates of Thanksgiving, the last few months for all of us has been uh, very trying. And uh, some of us, us have lost loved ones. Some of us have been very ill. Some of us have faced uh, adversities that nobody else knows about. But uh, when we come into that house, that is a place of peace. It's a place of safety. It's a place of God's comfort. And we want to thank God for that. So all of our FPC family, I do not have the words uh, in my vocabulary that would be able to help me express 
how much that Sister Fair and I love each one of you. Just know from us tonight, we are so thankful for all of you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your love and your prayers. Thank you for what you do for each other. A lot of you communicate and you're always there to pray for one another and to lift up one another. Uh, tonight, if you're listening and you don't have a church home, uh, if you do not have a home church, we would like for you to come and be a part of First Pentecostal Church in Cape Girada. I want you to know we are a great Bible-believing church that loves each other. We love God, and we would like for you to come and be a part of us at First Pentecostal Church. Maybe you're listening. You don't know where we're located. We're located at 3054, that's 3054 Lexington Avenue here in the beautiful city of Cape Girada, Missouri. Right now, we are having church every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. So this Sunday morning at 11, uh, we will be coming together. I would hope even maybe if it would be your first time, we'd love to meet you. And uh, we would love to uh, get to know you. So I guarantee you, if you come, come as you are. Allow God to bless you abundantly. And we would love to have you to be a part of our FPC family here in the beautiful city of Cape Girada, Missouri. On this evening, I would like, on behalf of Sister Fair and I, and the entirety of our First Pentecostal Church family, we would like to send our love and prayers to Brother and Sister Snell. Brother Snell is in Barnes Hospital, uh, and he needs just a continuation of our prayers. Uh, they need our support, and I know that each of you have been doing that. But I want Brother and Sister Snell to know tonight that we send our love and prayers to them and their family. We are believing God for a miracle. So where do we go when the time of need, when we're sick, we call upon the name of the Lord. God is our help. God is our strength. God is our help in the time of need. Also, we want to say to Brother Mike Dedeker that's had some heart surgery this week that God will just continue to heal his body and to lift him up and bless Sister Dorothy. Many, many others others that are sick, uh, but we know that God is able to meet their needs. Today, in our society, recently, uh, we had an election yesterday, and we're still waiting for the results of who will be the next president of the United States of America. I must say to you, and I believe those who are listening tonight, I love America, and I'm praying that God will bless America. I did my right as uh, took advantage of my right, <clears throat> as many of you did. Sister Fair and I went to the polls and voted our principles and our beliefs. As an individual, we had that, that right. Now, after we had voted, we cannot change or do anything after that. But I want you to know if you have voted, you did what you was, uh, should, should do, and God will honor you for that, and God will take care of this. So tonight, if you're anxious over this election, just trust God, that God is in control. Don't let this election get your spirit down. Don't let this election uh, overwhelm you with anxiety. We're living in a world right now that people are very anxious and that they have a right to be. Not taking away from them that people are very anxious. People, people are very troubled. People are, are very needy right now. And we, But I just want to tell somebody out there that's watching this, this afternoon, this evening, that I come to give you a message of hope and peace in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That God can, he knows what he's doing. Man, uh, uh, uh. I can say there's many times I don't, but God does. So God is always in control of our situation. God is always in control of our needs. And I just pray for everybody that's watching tonight that God will provide your needs. So whatever your need, your need may be spiritual. It may be physical. It may be financial. It may be a, a, a family member that's going through a crisis in their life. But where do we go when we have trouble? We go to God. There's an old song that we used to sing when I was growing up. I, well, uh, in past years, I got confidence. God's going to see me through. No matter what the case may be, the Lord's going to fix it for me. So I'm telling you tonight that I got confidence in the God that I serve because God, through the, all through Bible history, 
God has taken care of his people. Can I get a shout and an amen out there? God has always and he always will take care of his people because we are the apple of his eye. You know, the Lord reminds me sometime that he knows even how many hairs I have on my head. And if he knows that sparrow that flies and uh, uh there today. He knows what you have need of. When the enemy comes in, tries to tell you that God is not concerned about you, you need to rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. Take authority over that negativity. Take authority over the thoughts that are not like God. Jesus said, think on good things. Think on things that are true, that are pleasant, that are good report, and etc. So we got to think about the goodness of Jesus and know that God is in control of your life. If you're sick, According to scriptures, by his stripes, we are healed. If you're lonely, he is your companion, according to scriptures. If you're in need, if you have a financial need, God will provide your need. I want you to know I have been a recipient of God's grace, God's mercy, God's provision. And every time I have a need, I go to the Lord in prayer. I find me a place to pray, and I say, God, I have a need. And, and it's just like and the moment that I begin to express unto God, I begin to feel a release in my spirit when I say, God, I got a need. And he knows that even before I asked. But if there is something when I stand upon the word of God and I recognize that I may have some mighty big needs and I may have a lot of problems. And many of you are watching tonight, if you be honest with yourself, there's areas in your life that you have some needs. But I'm going to tell you what, we may have some mighty big needs, needs but we got a mighty big God. And I thank him for it tonight. I'm standing on the word of God because he's the author and the finisher of our face. He's the same yesterday in Hebrews, the same yesterday, today, and forever. It doesn't, whoever becomes the president, God is still God. Your miracle, your future, my miracle is not based upon who is the president. Uh, amen. Because God is in control. He sets up kings. He takes down kings. He, he rules the earth. So to, to, tonight, I don't want you to go to bed tonight overwhelmed and stressed out, but I want you to say, Lord, I'm going to go rest tonight in the name of Jesus because God's going to be with you when you're sleeping. He has angels encamped all about you when you're by yourself in your home, in your apartment, wherever or wherever you may be. God is with you if you belong to him. Now, you've got a real problem if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're not repenting, of your sins have been water baptized in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. You need to uh, take advantage and you need to follow the scripture. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, then Peter said unto them to repent and to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost because it's a promise unto you and to your children. If we ever need the Holy Ghost alive working in our spirits, uh, it's in this end time, this evil generation that we are in. We are living in the last days. There's perilous times, uh, and I don't want to uh, 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 paint a picture to you that everything is just okay because everything's not okay. We are living in the last days, and we need some men and women uh, that will fall down on their faces, uh, that will not play church, uh, uh, but that say, I am going to pray. I am going to fast. Uh, I am going to believe uh, for a miracle that comes only for God. We are uh, living in a dispensation of miracles. Yes, the world is dark, but our God is brighter. But that's why you got to stay on your knees. Uh, that's why you got to stay in this word. Uh, that's why you need to know the truth that you will not be deceived in the last days. Um, there is a, a spirit of deception. There's a liberal, this liberal spirit is uh, uh, all across America tonight. But I come against those liberal spirits in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I believe in righteousness, holy godly living but I believe in mercy and love and grace uh, you cannot be holy if you don't have love and grace in your life uh, oh hallelujah I feel the Holy Ghost here in this house tonight because God is in control of my life I'm going to go to Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10 Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10 
10. I love the word of God because we got to stand up on the word of God in these trying times in this uh, this generation. Uh, we got to get our hearts in the word of God. It says in Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10, fear thou not for I am with thee. Be not dismayed for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, will I help thee. Yea, will I uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God will raise up a standard against that. I want to tell somebody in this house tonight that when the, when the, the world comes against you, when the enemy comes against you, the Lord will raise up a standard against that. That is a wall of protection around you. That is a wall of protection around your family. That's why I want to live right. I want to be what God wants me to be. I'm not the old man I used to be. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. The things of this world is not my residence any longer. I want you to know I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And I want to stay in favor with God. I want to put my heart when church comes Sunday morning. I don't want to make an excuse for not being there. But I want to walk into that house praying and praising and giving the Lord thanks because I need to go to church. I need to be strengthened by my brothers and sisters. I need to hear that singing. I need to raise my hands. I need to worship God when I get there. I need to listen to what whoever's preaching. I need to find me a place to pray. God is going to bless. I don't care who the president is. God is going to bless. Yes, I have a preference, but God will set up and he'll take down. But it will, the, the, whoever's the president, that president will not define my re miracle. It will not define my relationship with God. It will not define our revival that God is sending to First Pentecostal Church uh, and our other churches. I, I want to make a statement. I want to make it loud tonight. I want all of our uh, fellow uh, churches in our fellowship that preach here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Uh, and they baptize in Jesus' name. Uh, and they believe in the infilling of the Holy Ghost uh, with the evidences speaking in other tongues and they believe in modesty and holiness and separation and love one to another now I'm going to tell you what we got to have love one to another too I want our churches to, to uh, just blow up with revival I want our every church and our fellowship I want every church to be blessed this is not my church this is not brother so and so's church this is God's church and because in the kingdom God will do great things and we will just say Lord I want your blessings up on me. So God is in control. In Exodus, in the Old Testament, um, uh, 14 and 14, I believe the book of Exodus, chapter 14 and verse 14, the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Let me read that again. The Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Sometimes we wear ourselves out when a little trial or temptation comes our way. Man, we wear ourselves out. How are we going to get through this? Why did the devil do this to me? Why am I going through this? We need to start saying, Lord, you're in control. God, you're able to meet that financial need. God, you're able to heal my body. We do not need to give the enemy any air time from our own spirits, from our own hearts. What we need to do is say, I'm going to lift my hands in the midst of adversity because my God is greater than that trial. My God is greater than this circumstance. And I thank him for it. Amen. Oh, amen. In Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding. Part of that says uh, trust in the Lord. I'm going to tell you what we need to do. We need to quit trusting in men and we need to start trusting in God and we need to start believing for the miracles that only God can give you. I can only help you so far. I can encourage you and lift you up, but God has to bring that miracle. I can pray for you and I can encourage you, um, but I want you to know that we serve a God that is a miracle worker. Our God is in control. Um, our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Uh, and yes, in 2020, I am I am ready for this year to be over. Can I just be human for a moment? I am I am ready for this year to be over. I, I, I am ready for this year to be over. I, I want this year to be over. I, I can't wait till 2021, but you know what? The Lord may call me home before then. 
we do want to send our condolences and our thoughts and prayers to Brother Irvin Baxter's family. Brother Irvin Baxter passed away this week. He was a great uh, Bible prophecy preacher, uh, end time ministries that has absolutely blessed hundreds of thousands of people, not only in the United States, but around the world. So we want to take a moment tonight to send our con condolences and our hearts and prayers to uh, Brother Baxter's family and the end time ministries team that God would just sustain them. Uh, brother, uh, the Lord just says, I want to take him out of this uh, 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 trouble and uh, let him go straight to heaven. So, But today we want to pray for the Baxter family in the name of Jesus. See, one of these days, we're going to die. I told Sister Fair the other day, one of these days we're going to die. If I came this whole world and lose my soul, what is it going to profit me? If I lean into my own temptations and my own self-ways and my own desires and I think I know better than God does, I'm going to get myself in trouble. And so are you. I've come too far to turn back now. I know too much not to live for God. I know too much not to love him and praise him. So I'm encouraging somebody. There's some people out here that knows that I'm preaching you the truth, that you need to come back to the old time past that God has placed in your heart. You need to come home before it's too late. I, and I can't make you do anything. That's not my job. I don't have the authority to do it, but I'm speaking to some a backslider out there. Maybe you haven't been to church for years. Don't you think it's time to come back? Don't you think it's time to make things right with God? Don't let somebody or a situation keep you from being saved because God is control of everything in our lives. I love Psalms chapter 54 and verse 4. Behold, God is mine helper. The Lord is with them that uphold my soul. Tonight, I want you to know I am so happy to be alive. I am so happy to be a child of the King. Let me confess that I'm human and I have my faults and failures. I'm going to repeat that. I'm human. I have faults and I have failures. But I have a God that speaks to me and he walks with me and he talks with me. I covet your prayers as a pastor. I need your prayers. I need your prayers as I pray for you. You know, recently, if you just kind of let me, I've been pretty serious out here tonight because God, give me this word that God is in control. I recently, in the last, oh, October the 25th, I turned 62. I know I don't look 62. Somebody told me I, uh, I now qualify for all those 62 uh, uh, year old senior citizens, uh, free sodas and coffee and all that. I like that. I'm taking advantage of it. But I know somebody told me that I didn't look. I don't know if they're lying or telling the truth, but that's side the point. Kind of laughed for a little bit. But you know what? I'm changing my vocabulary. I'm too blessed to be stressed. Sometimes we do get stressed, don't we? But I'm really too blessed. If I could take a piece of paper and write down all the blessings of God and all the God, times that God comes through, on the page where God had filled me, there'd be empty lines and empty pages. God always comes through. And God is always faithful because God is in control. Sister Fair and I, we get up about a Monday through Friday every morning about 4 o'clock. And we set the alarm. Our Sister Fair does. She's a very dependable, dependable individual for sure. She sets the alarm. And used to, I would say, I knew what time it was, but I got in this room. What, what time is it? The minute I heard that, I would roll over and say, what time is it? Now, since I turned 62, let me give you a little uh, husbands. Let me give you a little advice. I quit saying what time it is. Now I say, good morning, beautiful. <laughs> good morning, beautiful. And did you know what? That has changed. My bacon is better. My scrambled eggs are just perfect. She fixes me a Diet Coke and all those things. And you may say, Brother Fair, that's crazy. Well, just a personal thing. I've turned 62. I want... I'm not even thinking about giving in, giving up, giving out, because my God is in control of everything. But instead of saying, uh, what time is it? I say, good morning, beautiful. 
maybe when you get up in the morning, instead of just starting off with the Lord telling me, God, I need this. God, I need that. God, would you do this? God, why didn't you take care of that? Why don't you get up in the morning and say, God, I thank you for today. Lord, I thank you for your blessings upon my family. Lord, I just want to start this day off saying, I thank you that you brought me through another night. Yes, you may have some challenges, but we have a God that is in control of everything that we need. And God will take care of you. And God will see you through. There's no problem that's too hard for our God. Be nice to somebody this week. Call somebody. S send them a positive text. Let somebody know them that, that God is good to you. Because you're favored by God. We, we belong to God. We're, we're blessed in every way. Would you bow your heads with me tonight? I'm so thankful that you have joined us. I hope I've said something that hopefully encouraged you and lift you up. Get a good night's rest. Have a great week. Be sure and be in the house of God at 11 o'clock on this Sunday morning at First Pentecostal Church, 3054 Lexington, Cape Girardeau, Missouri. We want to see you there. Maybe, I hope we see some first-time guests on this Sunday from this broadcast. I will say this. Sister Fair and I went to vote the other day when we walked into the area where they was going to give out the ballots and check our uh, identification and all that, this real nice lady said, man, I love to hear you sing. I don't know who that lady was, never seen the lady before, she, but she was talking to my wife. I, she wasn't talking to me, y'all know that. But, uh, and she said, I listened to y'all's broadcast, uh, your Facebook live and, or your Facebook uh, post of your services. So, Tonight, for those that we don't even know that's watching, I want you to know that Jesus loves you. Jesus is in control. You have a need, call upon him. Come and be with us. Would you bow your heads with me tonight? Jesus, I love you today more than I have ever loved you in my life. I am more dependent upon you than I have ever been. I ask you, Lord, to bless this great nation, the United States of America. I ask you, God, to keep your hand upon us at this season uh, uh, and time in America and around the world. But I ask you, Lord, that you would bless each family of First Pentecostal Church. I pray that you'll bless them spiritually, emotionally, financially. I pray that you'll bless all of our viewers that are listening tonight. Many have needs. I pray, Lord, tonight, especially for Brother John and Sister Wanda, that, God, you would just heal Brother John's body and strengthen Sister Wanda tonight in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, tonight for Brother Mike Dedeker in Jesus' name and Sister Dorothy, that you would just bring a continuation of healing upon their body. We ask you to bless all of us because God is in control in Jesus' name. God bless you. See you Sunday morning.